I'm still scratching and crawling my way to Priceless. We are currently at 21 out of 36 weapons completed. So to narrow that gap today, we'll be getting our SMGs forged. So I've been dabbling in multiplayer a little bit here and there. I've been trying to keep up, trying to do one class forged per video. And the SMGs are definitely the largest class that we've, we will be getting done so far. I think there's a total of six weapons. So by the time we're done with this, we'll be at 27 out of 36. So we are almost there at Priceless. We just need probably like one, maybe two more classes to get all the way there. And with Season 1 Reloaded on the way, they're going to be dropping a few more DLC weapons. So we might even be able to skip an entire class. But for right now on the Striker, I need to get three kills without dying 10 times, I think. Which is probably going to be one of the hardest challenges we got to do today. Because if you ever see me play multiplayer, you know my KD is not anywhere near positive. I've been getting better, I think. I've been trying, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm pretty sure this entire video is going to be a gamer guy does sports talk segment the whole time, because if you guys don't know, I'm a Detroit Lions fan. And yesterday, at least the, the time I'm recording this, the Lions won their first playoff game in the last 32 years. This is like the, the first time we've seen the Lions in the playoffs in the last like seven years, something like that. The first time they've won the division in the last 30 years. It's a whole lot of firsts for the Lions in a long time. And it all happened in, or it all has happened within like the last month. And I just can't even express how cool it is to finally see a team you've been watching your entire life, put it together and actually maybe go on a run. Because we beat the LA Rams, which uh, has our former quarterback. We traded our quarterback or he requested a trade. He wanted to get out of here because we sucked for so long. So we traded him for their quarterback, which is currently our quarterback. It, it, you guys get what I'm saying. It, get, it all gets mixed up a bit, but hopefully you're, you're following if you don't you know, know too much about football. Hopefully I'm explaining this great. So basically we, we swapped QBs is what happened and they gave us a bunch of picks for it. And we used those picks to get a lot of good starters on our team and basically have like completely rebuilt the franchise from the ground up just by trading Stafford away. And it all came to a head yesterday with us going back against him. Like his his return to Detroit for the first time. And it was a really, really close game. Like literally a one point difference. It was, what, 24-23? Couldn't have gotten any closer, but it was a really fun game to watch. There are a few parts that had me nervous. But for the most part, we, we, we came out. We we're playing well right at the start. You know, piling on some points on our first two drives. And I just couldn't have asked for a better game. But there was a few controversies to come from the game, if you can believe it. The the first of which was uh, the Lions fans booing Stafford. Which, you know, like, uh, I, I feel like a lot of Lions fans, myself included, like, we all love Stafford. Uh, he played here for 12 years, gave it his all, even though we didn't do a whole lot with it. Oh, and there's our forge. Let's go. But, like, the whole narrative coming into this game was like, oh, you know, Stafford's going to come in and, you know, break the Lions' hearts. He's going to stop them from winning their first playoff game in, you know, whatever many years. Our little dream run is going to be over when he comes back home to Ford Field. And even, like, the NFL put out a picture or, like, a little illustration of him coming out of the tunnel. And, like, it was all Lions fans like, we love you, Stafford. Welcome home. Like, we were just gonna, you know, give him all of his flowers that day for that game. And it's like everybody was forgetting, like, this is a, a Jared Goff revenge game, too. Like, the Rams completely gave up on Goff and just shipped him out. They thought he was the reason that they couldn't win. And they just completely ditched him. And he got to prove them wrong a bit yesterday. And it was just a really fun storyline going into it. But that's not where the controversy stops because there was a pass interference call or, or a non-call, I should say, towards the end of the game that would have set up the Rams for a, a first down that they would have needed because they were trailing by one. So I've seen a lot of people upset about that, saying like uh, the refs gifted the Lions a win, which is absolutely a crazy sentence. Like who would have guessed the day? But I, I feel like there's a few blown calls that game. Like we drew one of the, the Rams players off sides and then they called the penalty on us which was absolutely crazy. It probably cost us a few points there on that drive as well. But for the most part, I feel like they're just letting them play ball. Like there, there's a few shitty calls. There always is a few shitty calls. But for the most part, they weren't letting like ticky tacky stuff, you know, come in the way of the game. And there's still more controversy because uh, the Rams tight end, Tyler Higby, he was running a route across the middle, went to go catch the ball. And our, our safety, Kirby Joseph came in. He, he's a bit of a smaller guy, Tyler Higby. 
a larger guy. And uh, he tackled him down low, hit him in the knee, and it tore his ACL, unfortunately. And a lot of people are saying like, oh, he's a dirty player. And the Lions are a dirty team and we're looking out to injure players. I, I don't think it's anything like that. I think it was like a, a freak accident, but a lot of people are just pointing to the, the Vikings game earlier this year where it was a very similar play. Uh, the Vikings tight end, TJ Hawkinson, was catching a pass across the middle of the field and Kirby Joseph was there again to stop him and tackled him low and he also tore his ACL. It's a very unfortunate coincidence. I don't think he's actively going out there and targeting people. And it's just been crazy. I've been seeing people like running around with that story saying like, uh, Dan Campbell was on the, the Saints in 2009 and during Bounty Gate where coaches were giving players incentives to injure uh, opposing offenses players. But Dan Campbell played tight end back then for the Saints and he was on injured reserve the entire year that that was happening. Like it's just crazy the, the conspiracies that pop up. But since the Lions did win this weekend, we move on to the next round. So that means we're either playing the Eagles or the Buccaneers. Uh, that game's still going on right now. I think it's like halftime at the time I'm recording this. So we don't quite know who we're playing yet, but it's gonna be one of those two teams. Uh, the Buccaneers. We already played them earlier this season. We beat them uh, 20 to six, I'm pretty sure. Something similar to that. So we already know that we can beat the Buccaneers, but it's it's very, very hard to beat an NFL team you know, twice in the same year. It's very hard to win in the NFL at all. So I, I don't underestimate them at all. I think Baker Mayfield is a fucking crazy good quarterback when he or just got like crazy good drive he, he has his ups and downs but I, I really do like baker and then for the eagles they were one of the, like the best teams in the nfl they went to the super bowl last year and lost to the chiefs and they started this year like winning 10 games only losing one and then towards the the end of the season they they started to fall apart a little bit they have not looked the best they have not looked the best but if we have to play either of those teams like anything can happen in the playoffs any team can win and when i say any team can win in the playoffs it really pains me to say this but the packers have been playing very very well jordan love is looking like he's going to be right on par with uh, the two previous quarterbacks there in Green Bay, which uh, as a Lions fan pains me, but at least now we're looking competitive. So maybe we can give him a run for his money. It'll make us look even better beating him. So let's just hope that he has his off days against us. But since the Packers or, or what I was saying about any team winning in the playoffs, uh, no disrespect to the Packers, but they were the seventh seed going into the playoffs. And when the seventh seed was introduced or since the seventh seed was introduced, they have never won a game in the wild card week. And the seventh seed is like Owen, what was it like six or something since they, they brought it in. So the Packers are the first ever seventh seed to win in the playoffs, which is absolutely crazy. But at least they beat the Cowboys. Like the, the Cowboys and the Packers, I think are the two teams I dislike the most. So at, at least one team I dislike lost there and they completely exposed them. Oh, and there's a Forge camo. But since the Packers did beat the Cowboys, the Cowboys were seated like one spot ahead of us. So that means the, the two top teams in the NFC, which is the, the Lions Conference, are, are the 49ers and the Lions. So the Packers winning gave us, the Lions, uh, another home playoff game, which is crazy. We never even had a home playoff game at Ford Field, our, our current stadium, before this weekend. So now we get two in the same year. And if the Packers beat the 49ers and the Lions beat whoever we're, we're going against next week, then it'll be Packers-Lions in the NFC Championship game with a trip to the Super Bowl on the line at Ford Field in Detroit. Would be That would be the absolutely craziest scenario. It's so fucking wild to me. I don't even think I fully processed it yet that the Lions actually have a chance at the Super Bowl this year. Because like I said, the, the Bucks, they're, they're a good team. Oh, there's four. Holy shit, we're, we're knocking these out. But like I said, the, the Bucks, they're a good team. But they've had their ups and downs. And the Eagles, they're, they're a good team, but they're not looking the craziest right now. So we have like a pretty decent path to the Super Bowl. We just got to beat the team in front of us, whoever it's going to be next week. And then if we can do that, we have to either go against like the best team in the NFC or the team that took them down. And it's a division rival. We've gone one and one against this year. We beat them once and they beat us once. And like I said, it's hard to beat a team in the NFL, not only once, but twice. But going against them three times. Oh, man, that that would be a fucking game. And the Lions have a fucking squad right now. Our offense is crazy. We have like one of the best offensive lines in football. Jared Goff is playing very well when uh, 
We're, we're keeping track of the ball, keeping them protected. We have like the best rushing duo in the league. Our, our two running backs are crazy. Our receivers have been doing very well. One of them was voted first team all pro which is basically like the best in the league. And our defense has been very, very good at stopping the run. We're like one of the top teams at stopping the run. But our secondary is a fucking liability, let me tell you. I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, we, we can't even cover a bed with a blanket. Like it seems like every single game, if it's like third and long, it's almost a guaranteed first down for the other team. And it's almost like every single game, we give up a, a 50 plus yard passing touchdown and there's another forge. And it's just frustrating because like we can play well, we can stop them on, on first down. We'll stop them on second down. We'll get them to like third and 25 and it's almost like it's automatic. We'll make a, a great play like against the Cowboys where our, our punter, who's, who's very good, pins them like on the one yard line. We have the, the Cowboys quarterback like for an easy sack. He's, he's in the end zone. This could be a safety. And our linebacker just whiffs on the tackle and it just gives them an uh, opportunity to throw to CD Lamb and get 92 yards for a touchdown, which made a huge difference in that game. And it's not even like we have like that bad of players in our secondary. We are completely stacked at safety. Like, we got we got CJ Gardner Johnson, who's coming off injury, who's one of the best safeties in the league last year. And he's been playing all right since he's been back. Nothing like too insane, but he's still like one of the better secondary players in the league and then like i i mentioned before kirby joseph he's a he's a good young player who's been playing pretty well we also have brian branch which is a, a rookie who's been playing exceptional and we got melifanu ilifanu i'm definitely butchering that name but he's been playing absolutely out of his mind as well since he's got in so we have four so we have four players at our safety positions where most teams usually only play like two so we've been having to play like a three safety set and kind of putting our corners on islands, but our corners aren't, aren't the greatest at being on islands. Oh, let's go. That's another forge. We're literally down to our last one, I think. We're flying through these. But teams are, are fully aware that our pass defense isn't the greatest. And it just takes one play to, to break it wide open. But despite all that, and what gives me hope is that we've still found ways to win games where we've gotten absolutely torched in the past game. Like we had fucking Nick Mullins throw for like 600 yards combined against us and in, in the two games that we played against the Vikings like Justin Jefferson still absolutely cooked us having like an eighth string quarterback throwing the ball but even though all that's going on I'm still so fucking happy with this Lions team We're, the job's not done if we can make a fucking run we're gonna go on a fucking run but this is probably the best year of football I have ever watched in my life and just to fucking sweeten the deal we hit 200k this week which is absolutely fucking crazy the world must be be ending the lions are good and the channel is growing and i did mention it in our last zombies video but just in case y'all didn't see that thank you guys so much for 200k it truly means the world but i've been i've just been sitting here yapping for the last half hour and we got almost all of our smgs done during that time maybe that's the strat I need to not focus on the camo challenges and getting caught up in the, the camo curses web. And I just need to blab about bullshit and I will just wipe every challenge off the fucking map. I think I might have spoken too soon because I still have one more gun left to get done. I still need to get a few long shots for this bad boy. There we go. There's one. Finally. This is fucked up. Now that I've been sitting here focusing on it, this is almost impossible. The camo curse has been in my head this whole time. I am the camo curse. Or maybe the camo curse was the friends we made along the way. I've never been more tunnel visioned in my life on getting a camo. Long shots are still haunting me from last year. It don't help that this thing is really not built for long shots, like, at all. But I'm stubborn. I'm keeping it because I, I like this blueprint on it. Wait, why didn't I just play hardcore? Am I stupid? We all know the answer to that. Oh, come on. No way, I only have six out of 15. All right, we gotta clear this the old fashioned way. We're going into hardcore. Actually, you know what? We'll mix it up a bit. I'll just do normal domination. Even though we just went into hardcore quick play, we still got rust. I just can't escape. And that's a long shot immediately. It's so much easier over here. I'm glad though that they didn't make every forge challenge long shots again, because then hardcore would just be filled with nothing but people like me doing this. That's all people really played hardcore or tier one last year. I still can't believe they did that. What was the point of changing hardcore? Just to like take it off like search engines so people don't look up hardcore Call of Duty and stumble upon you know what? I just checked it on the Buccaneers Eagles game. 
Looks like the Buccaneers might win it. They're winning 25 to 9 right now in the fourth quarter. So it looks like the Lions will be playing the Bucks again. A rematch. Honestly, the Bucks game is the one I was more nervous for. Because they got film on us. We got film on them. We beat them one time, but but they're coming off a playoff win. They're all fired up. We're coming off a playoff win. We're all fired up. It could be anybody's game. Hopefully, it's ours. Honestly, I was kind of hoping that we play the Eagles. But the Eagles getting a playoff win, maybe that, that would have set things right and the Eagles would have started rolling again, which kind of makes them scary. But I really just wanted to get revenge on Matt Patricia, who's uh, the Eagles defensive coordinator and used to be the Lions head coach, who absolutely just obliterated our team he was so ass they just alienated all of our players all of our our star players in the secondary that we could be using right now like darius slay and quandre Diggs. he just drove them out of town still can't believe that fucker is coaching defenses still he's even coaching the the patriots offense last year their ass he's coaching the the eagles defense this year their ass at least since he's taken over and even like the year before the lions hired him as their coach he was kind of asked that year too the the patriots defense wasn't too crazy or at least like you, you can't really equate their success to matt patricia i don't even know why people hire coaches out of the bill belichick coaching tree none of them work besides like brian flores for a bit and i think there's somebody else that i'm forgetting but like josh mcdaniel sucks Matt Patricia sucks. Bill O'Brien was terrible. Still even crazy that Belichick isn't the, the coach of the Patriots anymore. Absolutely wild times we're living in. The NFL is changing right before our eyes. Oh, and there we go. We're done with all of our SMGs. Let's get the hell out of here. And that's a pretty good chunk of progress right there. 27 out of 36. Well, I'm not going to go through every SMG, but this is what our AMR 9 looks like with Forged on. I'd even put on the double barrel for you guys. I was using it throughout that game, and I didn't even really notice that big of a difference. Still stand by that it's the coolest conversion kit that uh, sucks the most dick. And then here is our striker with Forged as well. These SMG camos were a fucking breeze, dude. We flew through those. But that's all I got for you guys today. I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate all your love and support, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.